What's up everyone? My name is Rad and I'm here today bringing you my ultimate Colossus guide for Alchemy Stars. Now that I've been able to put more time into it as of recently and understand how it functions, I definitely feel that I can provide a detailed overview alongside my recommendations on what to upgrade and prioritize first. Also, there will be timestamps down below in the description if you are interested in a certain section. So as always, without further ado, let's drop that transition. So, those of you wondering, well, what exactly is the Colossus and what is it used for? So to give a short summary, the Colossus is essentially your base. Within your base, you can trade and upgrade different sections of it. They are the bridge right here, the Lumina grids here at the bottom, the prison pillar, the resource station, starlight chamber, the exploration section, workshop, and the dispatch section. Each section provides a certain benefit towards your overall progression. Upgrades go from base level one all the way to level five with each subsequent upgrade costing more than the next. If you've played Arknights in the past, then it should be a bit familiar to you. One quick thing I will mention, I will be breaking down each section first and then talking about prioritization afterwards toward the end of the video. That way it won't be confusing. So starting with the bridge, think of the bridge as like the nucleus of the Colossus. The higher level your bridge is, the more upgrades you can unlock for other sections. Also, the higher level your bridge is, the higher the mood you can have. Think of mood like as the morale for your overall Colossus. As well, some specific Aurorians that you have acquired can increase the mood by furnishing the Colossus. Furnishing is basically the decor you put around your base, such as chairs, lights, plants, etc. The higher your mood within the Colossus, the more frequent gifts you get from your Aurorians and increased visits from friends. Basically, the rest of the Colossus goes as your bridge goes. Continuing on to Lumina Grid. This is essentially the power that runs your whole Colossus. It provides Lumina for every room. The higher leveled you build more sections of your base, the more Lumina it'll require to keep them powered up. Also, your Lumina, depending on your level forward, increases the Firefly recharge rate in your Colossus, same as the bridge, you can assign certain Aurorians that increase the recovery rate of Fireflies even more. Fireflies are mainly used for upgrades to the sections of your base. The higher the upgrade is, the more it'll consume. Next up, Prism Pillar. This is where you acquire prisms over time passably and doubles as a prism storage as well. The more upgrades and higher level your prism pillar is, the faster the regeneration of prisms occur and the more you can have stored up. The acquisition rate is also enhanced by if you assign certain Aurorians to the prism pillar as well. Now the resource station. Here you are able to produce carriers during specific time periods. With these carriers, you can use them in the resource raids and your yields will be much higher. Also, as you go along, and upgrade and level up the resource station you will also unlock higher resource raid levels more carrier storage and you can also assign specific aurorians that increase the carrier's production efficiency meaning you can attain them a bit faster transitioning to the starlight chamber this is similar to the prism pillar except here you acquire heart stones and they are stored over time as well just like everything else, the more upgrades and higher level the star chamber is, the larger its capacity becomes and the more efficient it gets in terms of restoring heart stones. You can as well slot Aurorians here that enhance the restore rate of heart stones. At higher levels of your starline chamber, it will also provide you with star gems. Heart stones are used for breakthrough in your characters. Star gems are used at the store to purchase rewards. Hopping over to exploration, in this section, you recharge and store MS passively over time. MS is what I call the stamina of secret territory. In terms of upgrades and leveling this one, it is a bit different. Here, you don't gain more capacity, but you gain a bit more of recovery rate for MS. 
by assigning certain Rorians to the exploration section as well. But it also increases your text fragment production, meaning that after the cycle ends for secret territory, any excess MS you have will be exchanged for text fragments at whatever your production rate is. Mine is currently at 130%. So one MS will translate to 1.3 text fragments. Now, I don't believe this rounds up to the nearest tenth and it stays at the value it is. I could be wrong on that, but I do believe that it stays at that value. Sliding into the workshop. Now, two things occur here. One, you regenerate and store atomic reagent over time. Two, you also unlock the ability to smelt materials. With upgrades and higher levels, you can increase the recovery rate per hour and also the capacity will be larger. As well, the higher the level of the workshop, the higher tier quality material you can smelt. The materials you smelt here are your ascension materials for your characters. You can also assign Aurorians here that can provide a cost reduction of atomic reagent for when you smelt those ascension materials. You can also smelt Colossus patches into fireflies. Lastly, Dispatch. Here, you are able to send out your Aurorians to complete certain requests. Upon completion of these quests, you can net rewards such as Jaspers, Nidium, Lumumber, etc. The higher level your Dispatch section is, the more Dispatch missions attempts you can have. This allows you to send more teams at the same time and it will increase your chances to receive higher tiered missions afterwards as well. You can assign Aurorians here to decrease dispatch recovery rate. One Aurorian will decrease it by one hour. Now, before I get to my recommendations on what I believe one should prioritize and upgrade first, these recommendations are based off when you have unlocked all the sections of the Colossus and then decide on upgrades afterwards. I do want to state that this is just my opinion and that this doesn't have to be the same order you follow, what I might value more doesn't mean that everyone else will value it the same way. Everyone is different and there is no right or wrong. With that out of the way, let's break it down. So first and foremost, I will of course mention the bridge. It is 100% a necessity considering that the higher level that you get it, the more unlocks and enhancements you can obtain. Level 5 for this is something that everyone will eventually do then the resource chamber it'll be much more beneficial to unlock higher resource raids as soon as possible as in my opinion they are way more stamina efficient than the lower tier ones also you can use carriers to greatly enhance the yields for your runs well i recommend going for level five it can be hard for some of those who might have trouble completing episode eight chapter 14 level four is still really good so aim for that then I would say the prism pillar being able to have extra prisms or stamina per day and more frequently will enable you to progress much more whether it be faster or more efficient unless you do multiple daily refresh per day you will run out of your base stamina quickly long term just like research chamber go for level five but level four as well is still super good next I would say dispatch completing multiple of these per day will net you a good amount of experience resources and materials and also some lumber these can definitely add up over time and make your progression a lot easier always aim for the highest rated one long term level five just to have three aurorian slotted to reduce the dispatch recovery rate by three hours overall but aim for at least minimum of level three you're stable to send out three teams and have up to seven dispatch missions quick note at level four you can also have the chance to find six star requests then the workshop, while well, workshop is incredibly important, it's not that necessary up until you get to the point of Ascension 2 and 3 for your characters where you'll need rare materials for them. Early on from base level all the way to Ascension 1 level 40, you should be all right with your materials. Definitely go for level 5, minimum level 3 for Ascension 2 materials. No need to rush until then. Speaking of then, then it's the Starlight Chamber. This, I wouldn't say, is as necessary to prioritize to level 5. While passively getting Hearthstones is nice for being able to break through your characters, Star Gems as well to be able to buy those nice rewards in the shop. 
In terms of four stars and higher, you will need duplicates to do such things as breakthroughs though. For three stars, it's perfectly all right because they only require the heartstones and no duplicates. If you do have multiple duplicates for lots of characters, then this may be a more important for you. Lastly, I would say exploration. MS is only used in secret territory and it doesn't provide much benefit overall to your progression. Besides that, it'll only pay dividends for when secret territory cycle is up and your amp excess MS is exchanged through text fragments. Wouldn't prioritize this to level 5 as other sections are more important for that level. Keeping it at base level 1 is just fine for what we currently have. It may potentially change though in the future. And special note here. For Lumina Grids, I will say that you only need to level them up depending on what other upgrades you've made in the Colossus. Let's say you want to have a level 5 resource chamber, prism pillar, and workshop, but everything else at level 1. Then there is no need to get all the Lumina Grids to level 5 as you'll have more than enough power for them at lower levels. Only upgrade the Lumina Grids for when you need that extra power for another potential upgrade in the Colossus. So that's basically it. Hopefully I explained everything to the best of my ability. I want it to be as in-depth as possible. So hopefully this will help some of you out. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing. I definitely would appreciate that. Also rate me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you liked or disliked the content today. All constructive criticism is welcomed. My name is Rad. You are all awesome. See you later.